we are crossing the Nile on the way to Abydos. Oh, we'll look up here and a look over this way. As we get to the other end of the bridge crossing the Nile, a police unit sort of joins onto us and escorts us pretty much the rest of the way. That now one unit sort of went and then it stopped, another one started, another one started, another one started. I counted four different units on the way to the Abydos temple. The Egyptian government doesn't want any trouble there because it's bad press and they'll get less tourists. On another occasion I noticed two tourist cyclists uh, riding along the road and indeed they had a police escort with them as they made their way towards Luxor. Ahead of us here we now have a police escort on the way to Abydos <laughs> that we picked up at the bridge. We've been travelling now with the police escort here and the man is certainly armed uh, for about 10 minutes, quarter of an hour or so as we make our journey. And they're ahead of us for general safety, I understand. On the road to Abydos we go through many checks, the police check us sort of over and over again, just checking, just taking note of the number plate and taking note that, in my case, I'm from Australia. This is our fourth police escort yeah. on the way to Abydos. Yes. Welcome to Abydos, even though we've already been through the town. The temple is very large and complex. Okay, Abydos <coughs> at the temple here. Uh, you can see the circular region there, <clears throat> there's one over here as well, and uh, the sections here where the large stones, this one turns a corner, the large stones have been, uh, well, it surely assists them to stay together. So the main temple is up this way. Either side of the main causeway in the forecourt leading up to the temple you have the absolution wells there. And these would have, if you will, holy water in them, or they would have in the day. And of course, they would have been much more elaborate. So the initiates, if you will, would purify themselves with water as they head further into the temple. And of course, this may remind one of the holy water within Christianity, within certain practices also. And of course, Christianity would dovetail with what is happening in Egypt. Now, I was in Old Delhi and there, there is a temple there, the Gurudwara Sisganj Sahib Temple, a Sikh temple. And I, I did it and uh, other initiates sort of going in there, not that I'm an initiate, but going into that temple, you would purify yourself in a way with the water heading into that temple also. Now just to note that when we get into the temple that there will be the etheric water <clears throat> I would suggest symbolized within the temple but we'll get to that. Just backtracking a bit it was a bit nerve-wracking taking the footage of the police. Now the facade at Abydos the main facade had a lot of sort of reworking to it so I kind of bypassed that and went into the temple and we'll have a look at some footage within the temple. But just to say that with the barge, we'll see the, the barge there or the bark, uh, the boat. Just to say that this is this 
I would suggest is actually an interdimensional uh, kind of creation, if you will, strange portal-like piece of what what I what I really do think is uh, an interdimensional piece of symbolism, rather than rather than, of course, an actual barge. The solar bark up here, and the figure here with the energies flying to the staff uh, as they do across here also. <coughs> the uh, participant here with the energies going up and over the further entity. The stone is offset with that central tree going through. Here in the temple with the bark and the two figures kind of floating up that you have. The goddess Hathor in this case emerging from the lotus. Now with the boats just in general I would suggest they're actually interdimensional. They're not practical boats in, the, in many of the cases depicted. So you have the boat but you could think of it in a way as three or in a way as a kind of magic circle also but so you have the lotus in the center but you have the kind of lotuses the portals not only in the center but at the outside also so you can see animals emerging or goddesses emerging etc from these portals and indeed with the animals there's the association with the animal and the boat also like the ark of the bible and you have the architecture upon the boat also the architecture in the center of this kind of interdimensional uh, creation, if you will. Within the temple, the various barks, and with this one up here, interestingly from the portal, you have the digit pillars coming out. really interesting up here within the temple in Abydos among many other features with the pillar being uh, held up here and the the eagle Horus like or Sukkho there are a few gods that have that eagle type head within within Egypt but uh, so also you just have the scale between the figures of course uh, but once again the pillar with the emergence of the figure at the top of the pillar. So here within the temple in, in Abydos there is certainly much to see. Much of it just escapes the, the sort of reality of the physical with the uh, sort of emanations coming from the hands. Um, but beyond that and just to look out, uh, this is looking out of the temple through there, but uh, within here, among many depictions, is this, this uh, fantastic depiction up here. And among other aspects, you have the central pillar, and importantly from the central pillar, as you will often see, right in here, you have the griffin-like winged lions and the, uh, the working of the pillar, particularly by the two main participants there, which is just so famous throughout the world, but depicted in so many different ways, alchemical ways, with the uh, main pillar sort of emanating upwards like so. So within this temple further, there's some really important, in my mind, imagery. For example, here you have that little staff in the hand that goes across from the hand. And indeed, this portion in center shot would be a hand also with the kind of flame fire pointing out. 
and in this case the other hand seems to be assisting it and then we have the further ritual situation here but turning around first of all down here you have the participant on the throne and uh, from the hand again you get a really good look so the participant here is holding the staff and the fire is kind of emanating out in this case and it would certainly look like that you have the flail staffs and crooks right there but uh, among other aspects so in this case fire in one hand and there's a picture here with what looks to be water in the other so a really kind of blatant fire and water and there's a picture here with what looks to be water in the other so a really kind of blatant fire and water uh, energies into the center in this case uh, and in this case coming uh, from the left hand for the fire and the right hand for the water in this case now Stepping back and looking up further, there's an absolute uh, classic up here. And so you have the, the bark, the barge, and then you have the, the, the end of it is a portal way in itself with another lotus, in this case, kind of coming out of the portal. And indeed, the same would apply here. And in this case, with the figure kind of emanating out also. So now that we've seen a bit of bark, boat imagery in Egypt. You can look to India and within this design here you can see the mage in the center and you can kind of see the it's swastika like but beyond that you have the boat aspect to it as well if you sort of take the opposite ends of the boat and divide it into two if you will. Indeed within the you have the mage in the center in this case uh, meditating but you have the second layer there and you have the four boats outside of that also if you look carefully. And that design you can see further in India, you can also see it in Egypt and elsewhere throughout the ancient world. In this depiction from India, you can see the two fish there, which of course would relate to Pisces in this case. And at the outer edges, you can see the four entities holding up the ritual, what I would suggest is a wider ritual situation here. And indeed in Dendra, Egypt, you can see that same uh, configuration with the, with the uh, picture of the zodiac there. Now the boat itself, the vessel, here you can see it between the two pillars and associated with the ladder, Jacob's ladder I would certainly suggest. And in this case you can see it kind of behind the veil as well. And I would suggest that veil in a way is the veil of the physicality the physical lock that most of us sort of find ourselves in and we uh, we can't get ourselves our mind beyond that so the bark or barge uh, as it's kind of termed in Egypt the boat is certainly I would suggest linked with the central pillar it's like a, here is an obelisk for example in Newtown Sydney with the a boat sort of emanating out it's also integral with the with the tree of life so to speak so here in a way it's sort of coming out of the pillar in a way and here you see it or in these shots you can see it associated with the foliage rather than the water in this case okay so within the temple here in Abydos we have many, many interesting depictions um, with, you know, also variant skin colours um, and just so forth and what would, to me appear to be ritual situations with variant colours perhaps relating to the elements. Uh, in this case, the, uh, the necklace type configuration but held in the hands, uh, possibly a, a kind of a portal way in a way, uh, very similar to what what you can sort of see around the neck also uh, that perhaps relates to the chakras in a very esoteric way. Yes, it's all very strange, but you can see the... Water, or the etheric water emanating from the mouth. That's the bark. So you see the emanation from the mouth there 
and that may remind one of a gargoyle. Now, of course, the gargoyle would have the uh, water flowing out the physical water, but I would suggest it's etheric water. Actually, uh, this is an interdimensional scene, but sort of redepicted. I've already mentioned that the barge or boat, I've mentioned about the sort of structure in the center, the architecture in the, in the center of the boat, the central pillar in a way too. Now with the boat, this is sort of one means of, uh, of, of an interdimensional kind of structure, if you will. And the other main one is the chariot also. So there is this interconnection between all of them. We will now proceed kind of out the back of the temple at Abydos to the Assyrian. And out there will be the flower of life and some other aspects. The main temple is up here and just down here, this is Assyrian, this place here. The blocks are just massive. Within here, it's um, the blocks are just massive and it goes into the, into the water and just zooming in here, this is the, or these are the famous Flower of Life um, depictions within the, within the rock here. Access right down near the Flower of Life depictions wasn't available, but nonetheless I got these shots. I could pick out at least five different ones there. Now they do look a bit out of place, uh, but nonetheless, uh, very interesting. And of, of course the blocks there were just huge. Now at the Ajanta Caves in India, I came across that uh, flower of life also. Others have come across it, but I came across it myself. And it's at the, um, the third eye level or the crown chakra level, the higher chakras there. And I certainly suspect that uh, when you're up through the chakras, it's sort of part of the, the teaching, part of the awareness, part of the background to the universe, the geometry to the universe. Hence, within the Bible, there's mention of the, the fish, the 153 fish, tying the Vesica Pisces in, uh, the great architect of the Bible wielding the plumb bowl, uh, much just the same as Freemasonry with the uh, great architect and all the rest of it. So this sort of etheric background geometry sort of binding the universe in a way, binding everything from the uh, the larger cos cosmos to the smaller cosmos, this, um, uh, this ge geometric, uh, numeric background uh, to things. Within the Bible, they make a big deal about the net not being torn. Of course, the Bible is a very complicated alchemical text. Just for a bit of a look here at Abydos, um, there's a, within the work down here, there's a, a huge cartouche. But um, so this is kind of under the desert. You can't go in here. It's not public, but it's below the sand basically uh, with the uh, with the Horus and Osiris right over here and just picking out the four elements the four elements those would be part of what's depicted here and then just uh, coming around the greatest scene and just another look at the blocks over here and these huge megaliths through here so the main temple is just up through here here at Abydos up within the relief here in Abydos is Neftis and uh, just interesting that Neftis is holding the kind of two or three rods in one hand here and that holding them right there and that uh, down here you see the two birds right there and uh, you can see these two around the figure also kind of making the edifice around the figure also up here is an excellent depiction of and I'll just draw in closer the caduceus like serpent making, sort of snaking its way up the lotus. And you can see the serpent there. There are two of them, so there's another one just tracking that down in the other hand within the depiction here.
So we're just leaving the Abydos Temple. Uh, we were waiting for a police escort. Now we seem to be moving. So we've got police escort, yeah? We've got a police escort, eh? So the police escort us right behind and we are making our way out away from the Abydos Temple. There's a truck here with a whole lot of corn on it. the police doing that? Is that to get them out of the road? Ask them to move? Far out. So we want to get around this truck. The police are not happy that we uh, we're hanging around here. Been heading out about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, the other police dropped off and now there are some more police up front. We're back to crossing the Nile, just starting here and this is where the police escorted us from to the temple at Abydos this morning. We're now crossing back over the Nile, it was the Nile to the temple at Abydos, uh, that run and the, on the way there, the, the police escorted us the whole way, and they partially escorted uh, escorted us on the way back with a couple of different teams of police, vehicles of police, 